This year, I bought my first CD transport, the ERD. And after posting a video review of that transport, a lot of people asked me how it compared to Audio Labs. Transport, a product that I had never owned before. Now, you're in luck because I just scored an amazing deal on an open box Audio Lab 7000 CDT transport. And I bought it specifically to make this video comparison with the hopes to help you make a decision as to which CD transport is right for you. Now you're gonna wanna hang in there for this video because after we quickly run through the specs of both, I wanna tell you about a couple hiccups I had with each unit, a couple things with the ERD that have started to bother me a little bit after a couple months of use. And lastly, I wanna tell you if I can really hear a sound difference between two CD transports of this budget level when they're both played through the same DAC. This is gonna be a fun one. Don't go anywhere. Let's jump into it now. First things first, let's talk about the price difference between these two units. The ERD's gonna retail at 1,299, while the 7,000 CDT from Audio Lab is $899. Now, I actually scored this for $659 used new open box from someone on eBay who had it for a couple months and decided to upgrade to another unit. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that the ERD has a smaller footprint than the 7000 CDT, which, you know, it's just generally sized closer to what a traditional CD player would be. While the ERD has more of that shit design feel, you know, similar to their Saga Plus preamp and the Yola Horn amplifier. Now, one of the other major differences that you'll see is the Audio Lab has this colorful LCD display here that gives you some information there. And it's actually kind of, you know, it's just got a little bit of a funkier vibe to it while it's playing tracks. Now, the album cover, song titles, that sort of information does not appear, but it does give you sort of this, while the shit just has pretty much this basic display here, which when you're playing, gives you a little bit of this information here. Now both units come with remote controls. The ERDS has the usual shit audio design. You can see sort of the functions available there. While the Audio Lab has definitely a lot more of a robust remote with several more options that you can use. However, they left one thing off this remote control, which there is no eject button on here. You can eject the tray using the ERD remote on the ERD, but the Audio Lab has no eject button on here, which I find very interesting, especially when you have all these extra features added in here. I wonder why they decided to leave that off. Now, before I flip these around and show you some of the features on the back, I do think it's worth pointing out the playback differences. The Audio Lab 7000 CDT comes in at 44.1 kilohertz at 16 bit, while the ERD is actually 192 kilohertz at 32 bits. As we turn the units around, this is where we really start to see some of the differences. Now, both units have power switches on the rear of the unit. When Audio Labs is powered on here, you can manually turn it off and on on the front. There's a standby button. But the ERD, you always have to reach around the unit or over the unit and switch it off and on here. Now, outputs are where things get really interesting. The ERD has AES, coax, and USB, while the 7000 CDT only has coax and this optical Toslink. It also gets really interesting when we start talking about inputs. The ERD really has more of a digital hub built within it, and it's giving you two USB inputs. While the Audio Lab only has one USB input, and this can really only be used for a thumb drive. While these USB inputs, you could connect a computer, a streamer, iPad, anything along those lines within this unit. So the ERD is giving you a lot more of a, a USB digital hub option over the Audio Lab. Now, lastly, on the rear, you'll notice this 12 volt trigger here on the Audio Lab. That's because it can be paired with their amplifier, the 7000A. So you'll see this uh, feature that's added here on the rear. Well, that's not something that you will see on the ERD. 
So those are the major differences in specs between the two units. Now, I want to tell you if I was able to hear a sound difference when I was using both transports through the same DAC, my Denifrips Aries 2, and I'm going to get to that in just a few minutes. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, each of these transports kind of drove me nuts in different ways. And this is especially true with the Erd, which I've had for a few months now. But the Audio Lab really threw me a loop for a loop when I was setting it up. The best way for me to explain this is to give you examples. I'm going to grab the camera and show you those now. Let's start with the Erd, as I've had this the longest, and there's two things that have really started to drive me nuts with this unit. The first is there's no dedicated eject button. The way you open the drawer is you hold this stop button down and the drawer ejects and then you press it again and it will close. Now the issue I have is that you just don't really know how long to hold this and sometimes I press it, nothing happens, and I sort of press it again, and then maybe something will happen and then maybe it will. And there's times when I just think that the unit's no longer opening and closing. Now that also speaks to another problem I have which is sometimes it's almost like the unit goes to sleep even after I power it off and on. And I have to then, I'll power it on and I will try to insert something and it just won't read and this will actually dim. And the only way to kind of wake it back up is to reach around, turn it off and turn it back on. And then I can hopefully get the drawer back open again and it will read a CD. Now, all that to say, I love the responsiveness of the drawer on the Audio Lab. It feels like for a less expensive price, I'm just getting a lot more functionality. It's just everything just seems a bit smoother. Now, when I first set up this audio lab, I grabbed my copy of Songs from the Big Chair by Tears for Fears, put it in, and it immediately started, when it started spinning to play, it made a whirring noise. I could actually hear the disc spinning here on the tray and my heart sank. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. This thing was like $600 for me at least, and it makes a whirring noise when it's spinning. Now, I've tried to recreate that with this video, and now it seems to be playing fine. So I'm not exactly sure. However, I did put a disc in last night, another completely other random disc, and it whirred a little bit. However, almost every other disc that I've played has not made that whirring noise. So I'm not sure if that's something with the unit or with the disc I've chosen, but ooh, it really scared me. Luckily, I haven't had it enough to where I think that the unit is, you know, completely at fault. But ugh, I don't know. At this price range, you would expect not to hear any noise at all whatsoever from that unit. But one other crazy thing happened. Let me show you that next. Now, after listening to Tears for Fears, I pulled out this Sturgill Simpson CD put it into the audio lab, and this happened. As I was loading it, I get CD reading. I get really loud clicking. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but it's clicking. And then it basically just will not read the CD, which I thought was very strange because I had already listened to this CD on the Erd. See there, it's just, it won't read it. Now, let me show you. At first I thought, well, I guess something is screwed up with this CD. But when I put it into the Erd and press play, it reads and it starts to play. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on with that one CD. Why will it not play in the Audio Lab, but it will play in the Erd? If you have any ideas as to what that may be, please let me know. Quirks aside, let's talk about sound. Do two CD transports of this budget level and design sound different when using the same external DAC, in this case, my Denifrips Aries 2? Now, if you go back and watch my original video on the Erd transport, I did hear a sound difference when I upgraded from a regular CD player, traditional CD player with a built-in DAC to a transport with an external DAC. And then I bought the Denifrips Aries 2 and paired it with the Erd and heard an even 
better sound improvement. So I do think that there's a sound difference between using a transport versus a traditional CD player. But I was just dying to know, will two CD transports using the same DAC have a different sound? Now what I did is I would go back and forth listening between the two, and I would pick a song, and I would basically listen to that song four times, once with the ERD, then with the Audio Lab, ERD, Audio Lab, right? Now for this listening session, I pulled out two CDs, Nefertiti by Miles Davis, and Mavis Staples, Have a Little Faith. This album came out in 2004. I think it's really flown under the radar, but it's a great album. You should check it out. The so second song is called Pop's Recipe, which is basically a song written about her dad's philosophy of life, which has a wonderful positive message that if you're going to have to listen to a song four times in a row, even my wife said, ah, this song really makes me feel happy, you know, listening to that philosophy over and over and over and over again. If you haven't heard Pop's Recipe, definitely pull it up in a streaming service to check it out. You might want to pick up a copy for yourself. So I would I spent a lot of time listening, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't really hear that much sound difference between the two transports using the same DAC. And this actually doesn't surprise me because I really think the big hero here is the Denifritz Aries 2 DAC. I really love this DAC. It sounds great with the Audio Lab and it sounds great with the ERD. And it has really made me fall in love with listening to CDs again. It's got a kind of a old school warm analog sound to it. I know that sounds silly because we're talking digital with CDs, but it just makes my CDs a lot easier to listen to. And I found that to not only be the case with the ERD, but also be the case with the Audio Lab. I, I really thought I might have a bias to say the ERD sounds better because again, I spent $1,400, whereas with the Audio Lab, if you wanted to buy it, it would be $900. So you're getting a better price. And so I thought, well, again, it goes to a bias that we have when we spend more money on a piece of gear and we expect it to sound better. And so I was worried I would have that bias. But after a lot, lot of listening, long listening sessions, going back and forth, back and forth, I just really didn't hear anything that stood out in a manner that would make me say, you got to buy one of these transports over the other. I feel like I'm letting everyone down a little bit by saying there wasn't a huge sound difference, but I think anyone that's familiar with using transports and DACs probably expected that to be the case. So all that being said, if you were to ask me which of these transports you should buy, I would answer your question with a question. Don't you love it when people do that? My question to you would be, what features are you interested in? Because the ERD is really bringing a lot more in terms of USB connectivity. It's got the two inputs and it's got the USB output, which is not something that I've seen on other transports. Uh, Shit Audio also has their Unison USB um, feature. So if you've got Shit DACs, they're, they're going to pair well and easily with the ERD. Whereas the Audio Lab basically only has that one USB connection on the rear, and that's for a thumb drive only. And I love that people are still using thumb drives, but that's something that I gave up a long time ago. So when you're talking at uh, $1,299 for the ERD over the $899 price tag for the 7,000 CDT, and keep in mind, you can buy other Audio Lab models for a lesser price. I do think it's going to come down to features because I just haven't heard that big of a sound difference when using the same DAC. So for anyone that's interested in getting into CD transports and pairing those with DACs, but the sticker price of the ERD is uh, just a little bit too much and they just don't really care in the digital connectivity of a hub like the ERD has, I think the Audio Lab would be a good way to get into the transport and DAC game and you just avoid that sticker price of the ERD altogether. Now lastly, if you've made it this far, there's one last thing I wanna mention, that that is neither of these units play SACDs. So if you have a huge SACD collection and you're interested in one of these transports, you're gonna to have to look elsewhere because neither of these play them. Now, I've gone on and on and on about the ERD and the Denifrips Aries, and I just loved pairing these two units together and it really made me fall back in love with my CD collection. If you'd like to hear more about that experience, you can do so by watching this video here.